Hi, hey, good afternoon everyone. So, I'm Paul. Um, and today, I'm going to talk about uh, actually correction in Kubernetes. Uh, when I was starting off uh, researching about uh, Kubernetes, the pronunciation is Kubernetes. Um, <clears throat> my original topic was actually deploying WordPress slash Drupal using persistent disk on Kubernetes, but uh, uh, we're time bounded, so WordPress is the first one sample. Okay, so what is Kubernetes? It's open source, it can automate deployment, <clears throat> it can scale, uh, it can manage container. So I've heard that last meeting, <coughs> topic is Docker. So uh, Kubernetes can actually manage those applications run by Docker. And uh, so now it groups containers that make up an application. So this application can be a combination of several <coughs> containers. <coughs> so Kubernetes, this was actually originated from an internal project at Google. And tawag nila doon is Borg. Um, Borg, ito yung blueprint ni Borg. At uh, yung tawag nila sa, sa, sa master server, Borg Master. And uh, tawag nila sa mga slaves or nodes, Borglet. Diba? Sige pag ginawa natin yung pig. Piglet. Piglet. Alright. So, it's an open source managed by the Linux Foundation. Um, and alam naman natin sa Linux Foundation, uh, marami yung mga minamanage ng mga open source projects uh, like Maven, uh, ang dami pa, Apache projects, Nginx, Nginx, and a lot more. And it has a unified API. So when you deploy your web application and uh, setting up batch jobs uh, and database uh, provisioning, naka API yon. So that's what Kubernetes is. And it decouples application from machines through containers. It serves as a uh, mediator between your machines and your application. And your uh, application. <coughs> And it has a declarative approach in deploying your application. Pag sinabing declarative, uh, yung mga manifest na ginagamit is easy to understand. It's being declared in human form, uh, language. And it also automates application configuration through service discovery. Pag sinabing, pag sinabing natin service discovery, like for example, you added uh, like for example, we have a LAN, and then you added one more PC. So automatically, it's being discovered by a master or or the server nyan. But in Kubernetes, it's so intelligent enough that pag plug mo palang ng, ng node, it it can detect already na oh may bagong there's a new node. So. Um, Mayroon siyang ganong intelligence. And it maintains and tracks global view of user. Uh, sorry, cluster. So that is one of the one of the beauty of, of Kubernetes because like for example, if you have like 1,000 servers, physical servers, and then you transform that into VM. So imagine if you have like 1,000 servers and you converted that to a VM, probably you'll end up having 1 million virtual machines. And from one million virtual machines, you can create several clusters, millions of clusters. And imagine you have 1,000 servers. Before, if you're going to manage that, medyo mahirap kasi you have, you, you have different hypervisors. Meron kang Windows, meron kang Linux, meron kang mga uh, HP pro uh, products na iba-iba yung mga hypervisors. Hypervisors. This is the, the graphical user interface to manage those servers. 
But in Kubernetes, isa lang yung isa lang yung gagamitin mong API, isa lang yung gagamitin mong interface to manage all of them. So that is one. <coughs> and uh, hindi lang sa application yung it, hindi lang sa application that it can provide API, but it can also provide API for deployment. Like for example, you deploy your application, uh, you set up your <coughs> your deployment parameters. So it is being triggered by using API. Excuse me, question. Oh, yes, sir. So are you also connected with some Cisco clients also? Um, not yet. Uh, so we haven't been experienced with connected with Cisco clients. Ah, uh, hindi pa. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Continue. Okay, so these are the key concepts of Kubernetes. So as you research and do your own thing with Kubernetes, these are the terms that you will encounter. Containers, pods, replication controller, labels, services, nodes, and cluster. So when containers, this refers to your uh, packaging. That, that refers to your uh, Docker, Docker images. So like for example, you have your uh, Drupal application package into an image, so that is your container. And then pods is a single unit or a small unit of your deployment. And then we will talk more about that. And then replication controller. So this ensures that if you deploy your application, it ensures that everything is running. So then you the replication controller now. And that replication controller can be presented by a uh, configuration file, which is YAML. And from that YAML file, uh, you can do your rollback. Like for example, when you deploy five, five nodes yung nilagay niyo, then, ah, kaisip niyo, uh, we will be expecting more traffic, so kailangan natin i-revise yung, 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 dapat we need to provide more nodes for my NGINX or for my uh, web server, or my Apache, or my Varnish. So, revise ko yung configuration file na yun. From 5, that will 20. And then, I will <clears throat> I will use my API to uh, provision those uh, um, extra nodes. And then labels. Labels is just, it's, and it, I mean, <clears throat> it's just a label that composed of key value pair so, and services so services these are your uh, application that you can expose meaning when you have services these are the applications that you can access you can expose it through the public or you can expose it only within your organization and of course node can be your host machines like for example if you have a single machine that is on Kubernetes running on your local machine then that's one node. <clears throat> or if you have like uh, uh, three virtual machines, then you'll have three nodes. And clusters. So this is this. When, when we say cluster, uh, it has uh, compute, storage, and network resources. So pag sinabi yung cluster, uh, it's composed of, of uh, different nodes. You have master and then you have slaves. Um, that's from the traditional definition of clusters. And <clears throat> uh, I just want to give emphasis on the pods. So as you can see, the pods here, it's within your node, within the Docker, within container, and then there's your pods, the green one. So, I'm ah, sorry, the pods is the orange one and then the containers is within your pods. So a pod can include several containers, like for example, meron kang containers for your Apache, containers for your, separate containers for your database. So a simple Apache application, uh, a simple uh, PHP application. So that's the setup. And as it has a, shares of IP, meaning since it is being connected to a node, a node has its own IP. So automatically that 
the pod will have uh, an ID. And it has its, its own uh, namespace and storage. <clears throat> so this is the replica set. So it manages the life cycle of pods and ensures that a specified number are running. Where's the growing board? Okay, so here's our uh, service. So as I've said, a service will give you, will provide you uh, uh, an exposed ports so you can access your application and it, it will also serve as your load balancer. So mas maganda siguro kung i-demo natin siya, right? From scratch. Okay ba yan? Yes. And on Digital Ocean. But before that, let me do this uh, uh, persistent volumes. Or when you say persistent volumes, it, it can refer to uh, persistent disk or persistent disk that is being used by the container. So, pag sinabing implicit per container, um, yung data is nasa loob ng container mo. Like for example, if you're, if you're going to create an implicit per container, that means that your data is within your container. So, pag bumagsak yung container mo, the data is lost. Explicit per container, that means that you have your container, pero yung data mo is located in another container. So, parang you have your PHP, and then yung, uh, you have your MySQL database, your data is located in, in another container. So that is explicit per container. Pag bumagsak si, si container, may SQL container mo, well, uh, makakata yung database mo, but the data is still there, right? Okay. Si per host naman is, you have a container, but your data is located on your host machine. So parang nakamount lang yung, let's say, nakamount sa another computer. So kapag bumagsak yung container, buhay pa rin yung data mo. So those are the first three options on na kailangan mong isipin when you are going to implement a dockerized or containerized application. And the last one is the multi-host. Uh, you can either <clears throat> store that on AWS S3. So pag nag-down yung container, why pa rin yung data mo. Pag nag-down yung <clears throat> mounted uh, data mo, mounted na containers, buhay pa rin yung data mo. Pag nag-down yung directory or yung data mo, buhay pa rin. Kasi your storage is on S3. Ang problema lang ay kapag nag-down sa S3, kahit na-up yung mga containers mo, down, down yung data mo. Okay. <clears throat> and <clears throat> for location, so like for example, if you're going to imp use implicit per container, uh, your volume is going to be on your host. So this is the actual uh, library directory. And then, kapag gagamit ka ng another container, same, because it's still, it's, it's the same container. Pero pag gagamit ka ng per host, it's so in another, <clears throat> in your host machine, it can just mount within container. And kapag, <clears throat> kung gusto mong ilagay itong volumes, you can use Ceph, GlasterFS, or NFS. Yan yung mga uh, proprietary uh, volume that you can use. Next is, <clears throat> yun yan, sinasabi ko kanina, kapag nag-crash yung container mo, uh, buhay pa rin yung uh, data. Kung, ay, kung dito, kung if you're using implicit, uh, if your directory, if your container is crashed, uh, lahat ng data mo, pati application, magsak. So, same is with your explicit per container. Kapag parehong containers yung bumagsak, your director will be unavailable. But if you're using per host and multi-host, they are still alive. And kapag nag 
crash naman yung host kasi nating host machine yung talagang ito yung the host machine where your containers is being stored so talagang hindi mo unavailable talaga yan pati yung per host ang buhay lang is yung multi host because it is <coughs> stored in your AWS or S3 For shared, of course, um, for implicit, you cannot share it because it's on your machine. And for explicit, yes, you can share it with other containers. And the same is with your uh, per host and multi host. So it can be shared. <coughs> So, who are using Kubernetes? So, these are just one of them. Amadeus. Sino yung familiar with Amadeus? So, if you're in an airline agency booking system, then that's that's the father of booking. Um, eBay, Comcast. Remember niyo yung Pokemon? Yeah. That was actually the test run of Kubernetes and uh, <clears throat> it was the time that Kubernetes was really Yes, kaya ko to. And then, I I will log in to those three servers. Three nodes, I mean. So, I'm using the root. Log in. And, uh, and then, we'll log in to another uh, the cube number, number two. Kanina, that's actually the master, cube master. And then the second one will be our node number node one. Cube node one. And then the last one will be our cube node two. And they have a different idea here. <coughs> going to install uh, the specific application and packages for the master. So I, I actually prepared the files that we will be using. Uh, that includes the necessary commands that you will be executing to your master node and uh, to your master and ang gamit ko kasi dito is uh, Visual Studio so uh, kung hindi nyo pa ginagamit you can try it out it's pretty awesome it's free <coughs> so community edition my notes and the necessary file that we will be using so for master these are the set of commands that we will be installing to our master uh, server okay so in the usual usually you update your your server as soon as you provision it you update i mean this is the manual process but you can actually automate this uh, I'm just showing you how to set it, how to set up your Kubernetes in a manual mode so that you can automate it. Kasi, di ba, why, I mean, ang problema kasi is we already, I mean, we always go to the automation without even understanding what's behind it. So, mas magandang we understand ano yung mga codes na sineset up. <clears throat> so, uh, update natin yung server by issuing get update. Uh, 
updates and the same is with my uh, two nodes and then we will get the packages uh, from Google Cloud to set up your Kubernetes repository so you can get the latest version of your uh, Kubernetes and <clears throat> And then you will install the Docker, Docker, the Docker. Okay. Um, actually, <clears throat> uh, the Kubernetes the title they have a get started script, but that's actually not working anymore at this time. Okay. Probably there's a um, an update. There's a kernel updates in Ubuntu. Na hindi na siya automatic. Even if you set it up non-interactive, it will ask you to select. I mean, to uh, yeah. Kaya hindi magtutulito yung proseso. So you have to manually <coughs> or you need to revise the script. So this is what I did. Um, so update, update, install the Kubernetes, install the Docker. Um, Now we are in uh, line 15, installing the Docker. So the same is the same with our nodes. Okay, so install, install. <coughs> and now we are ready to install the kubelet, the kube admin, the kube control, and the Kubernetes CNI, these four uh, important uh, element of Kubernetes. Kinaan mo ko lang siya in terms na walang <coughs> whiteboard. <coughs> so this is actually the uh, the easiest. I mean, it, ito yung nagparealize sa akin. This is actually where Kubernetes works. So right, uh, focus on this. This is actually our uh, master. And these are the workers. Those are yung, yung na provision natin na two nodes. So they can actually be your workers, okay? Workers, 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 and this is our master. So in our master, we have a Kubernetes cluster services. And so now the master, there's actually an API. And <clears throat> that API will be triggered to my environment. Like for example, the cluster services, uh, 
and the commands will be coming from the manifest or the configuration file, which is this. That's actually our YAML file. And our YAML file will include uh, deployment, our pods, our containers, and then that manifest or configuration file will be fed to our master through AGI. And this master will tell, uh, he will be the one to schedule, kasi eh, syempre, hindi lang naman yan, like for example, 1,000 servers provision mo. That 1,000 will not be automatically provisioned at the same time. It will be scheduled in a manner that uh, efficient. So, <clears throat> siya rin yung magde-decide kung that particular path will be in this uh, node 1 or node 2 or <coughs> node 3. And sino yung, <coughs> sino yung bakausapin niya? It will communicate through directly with your kubelet. This kubelet. May kubelet dito, may kubelet there, may kubelet. That's why when we installed it, one by one, we installed Kubernetes kubelet, uh, Kubernetes CNI, which is uh, responsible for the networking. <coughs> and so, yun lang yung proseso. So, I have the configuration file, and my how it looks like and then <clears throat> we will ipapasa natin to sa master through the API and our master will schedule it and then decide whether it will be it will be placed in worker 1, worker 2 or worker 3 so that is just the uh, idea there uh, any questions guys? Okay, lang. Okay, question. <clears throat> so, what is this driver panel? Because you cannot understand where I'm driving something. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Okay. Okay. Oops. I'm going to go to the house. So, this is app.yaml. And a YAML file uh, that's deployment, then pad one. Container, tapos under pod 1, you have container image 1. That can be your pod ship. And then, the next is pod 2, which, is, which can be your Apache Docker image. Pagkita na naman niya sa configuration file. That one. So ito yun, yung ito. That's simple. That is... So this is example. <coughs> this is actually the actual deployment file. The, and there are actually different kinds of, of configuration file. Uh, configured. There's services, there's persistent volume claim, uh, deployment and then there's another replication this one replication services so we don't need to understand the it's just a YAML file with with human readable terms ang pinaka importante lang natin tandaan dito is the app name okay the app name and then the the replication the sir the YAML type or YAML kind of it's either application controller or or deployment or services. And I'm using the version one. Okay back on our video. So we are now finishing the last one, which is the So cube admin in it. So that's that is the command that you execute only on the master. Okay? This line 19. And after exe after executing that command, it will actually give out a token and the IP address.
And that is the most critical part. Baka ba mistake mo na i-install dito sa node. So this tube admin in it, pod network blah blah blah, will be executed only on the master. And And then after execution, tapos na yung video, presentation. Okay. And now with the picture. <clears throat> so imagine kanina yung uh, in-install natin. the completion of that cube admin in it it will give you this line here cube admin join token and then the IP address of the master that means that that is the command that you will issue on each of your nodes so that it will be connected to your cluster uh, if you're familiar with docker we have a docker swarm and meron docker master and in order for your Docker uh, minions, you need to issue the same, eh, probably the same than yung pagkakawari, parang Docker Swarm join. So you need, to, you need to issue that command in each of those uh, minions. And in, in, in Kubernetes, this is also the, the, the same command. So you need to issue that on your, uh, command and then it will do the certification it will do the it will generate the proxy certificate the client certificate that will be used to set up your cluster and then it will in the end it will generate the token and the IP address of the master so probably this will from Susan Danmo this will take around five minutes five to ten minutes There. There. So now you can now join any number of machines by running the following each node as root. So lang, copyin mo to, and then you run it to your node 1 and node 2 so that your cluster will be complete. Play that. <coughs> okay. So, meron pa natitara sa doon mga 3 commands more. Copy the admin that on <coughs> and uh, we have a commands in Kubernetes to check the nodes, the current nodes connected to your cluster. So that may be connected before this is before the commands. Uh, command init. So, isa lang. Uh, this is from the command uh, from the from the master server, 
and then I set up Cube CTL get nodes, and that in that particular time it's only the Cube master. But as soon as the commands, you join, if you issue that already on the nodes. And then we we will check, and then we will issue again cube CTL get nodes to check whether these nodes are already connected. Parang Dota lang na join, and then after a few minutes already na pwede na play. So the same set, the same. Okay, so now I'm ready to issue this cube admin join to my nodes. Okay, and then uh, focus on your attention in this tab while I plug in this in this one. Okay. There, so cube node one not ready, cube two, cube node two not ready. This is this is uh, the service discovery. So automatic yan, hindi mo na kailangan i-pin pa or something. And it will, the cubelet will, will, send, will send out information. So malalaman mo dito by issuing the watch uh, uh, command. Parang monitoring the cube CTL get nodes. So siguro mga kanyan, mga 3 minutes to, uh, for the status to be ready. So we're using version 1.7.5 and once the status of cube node 1 and 2 is ready, your cluster is complete. You can say you are now uh, having a full-blown cluster. S uh, same setup with if you to the Google Cloud or SSC GCP, if you subscribe to it, you automatically have a setup. You don't have to But if you're putting it on a cloud na talagang DIY uh, Digital Ocean is actually one of the best place to set up your uh, Kubernetes Alright, so now that we have a working cluster Now it's all time It's all your time Guys, uh, sinong na maka unang makapag uh, post and share hashtag do, do meet up uh, my t shirt So, first 10 post and share <laughs> hashtag do meet up do, do meet up first 10. I love it. 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 We've been running our commands inside the node or inside the server. Now, <clears throat> Uh, mas maganda kung we can access it from our local machine. Okay? So, this is my okay. 
this is my local machine. So I will I will try to cube control, cube config, uh, admin that one have get pads. That means that I will display all the pads uh, in my uh, in my server. Oh, sorry. I think I connected to the. It's in a black port, so I will connect to my Wi-Fi. kubectl dash dash cube config admin that one f okay that admin that one f is actually coming from my kubernetes master so kung titingnan mo yung log ng admin that one f that's actually the certificate that includes your encryption keys and uh, in order in order to connect to your kubernetes master you need to have that configuration the admin that configuration um, the reason why I'm specifying my cube config is because I actually have several uh, Kubernetes installed in my local machine. And uh, in order to specify or to target the, nest, the, the, the one that we're working on right now, I have to specify the admin that app. So this command will get the pads, the current pads that we have. Okay. So, <clears throat> so what I did in that particular uh, State because I wasn't able to record some of the moments. So during the deployment of my WordPress, so I did a kubectl create local volumes, and this particular command will create a persistent volume. So para mautusan mo si Si, uh, si cluster service hey this is the configuration file you need to set this up to our environment or to our infrastructure and let's take a look at that uh, configuration file so api version persistent volume that's it that is the the type of the, the configuration and the metadata the, that's actually this is actually a um, a storage volume with storage capacity of 20 gig and then there's a read write uh, as access mode and then another persistent volume kapag na issue natin and this is the command that I issued so QCTL create local volume now we can confirm that yes. by typing out uh, QCTL Get the PV. The stands for persistent volume. Get PV. So, ito na yun, yung ginawa natin. Uh, hindi ko lang may pakita kung paano, na, paano natin execute. But this is now the produce of that command. So, local PV1, that's, our, that's actually the name of our metadata. And then, that's an access modes. Uh, if you've noticed, default claim MySQL. This is actually the, our data. 
for our database MySQL. And then the second one is our WordPress. Let me our WordPress uh, uh, data. And then the second one, the second manifest or is we will create a generic MySQL. So pag sinabi natin, you've created secret generic. That means that gusto natin mag-inject ng secret data or yeah, secret data for our database, for our uh, username and password. But at this time, this is just a secret code for our MySQL pass. And we, we will be using this secret pass to our MySQL deployment. This one, secret reference. Kasi yung magtatanong ka, paano natin, paano natin mag, paano tayo mag inject ng secret code? That, well, pag sinabi secret code, that can be your uh, MySQL password or MySQL root password. And si Kubernetes meron siyang ganong utility. And Paano natin i-access yun? It's using this. Secret key reference, the name of the MySQL pass, and then key, which is the password. But that's actually not, this is not the actual password. Okay? And it will, it will access the Kubernetes secret na nilagay na. Actually, ang secret code natin dito, uh, based on this manifest, Yeah, this is the literal password. Pass one two three four. And you can only I mean, and, uh, you can only execute this on the master on the machine. So that's what at least safe siya. Hindi siya yung dito mong include mo sa repository mo. No, that's a big no no. So you can either include that directly typing in. <coughs> and then now we are now ready to uh, create our uh, MySQL deployment manifest. Uh, okay. So from line 30, MySQL deployment YAML. So this is our uh, MySQL deployment file. Uh, As you notice, ginagamit natin yung persistent volume that we created earlier. Ito yun, yung persistent volume. MySQL claim with 20 gigabyte of storage. And then another is the deployment. And I'm using the containers, the Docker container. The title niya is my, uh, the, the name of that uh, Docker container is MySQL. We're using 5.6. And uh, MySQL, MySQL pass, that's the root of our password. And now, so let's, so actually we've already, we have already uh, executed that. And to check, okay, so to check, we will uh, try to issue that command. Get pods. <laughs> and this can you can actually access this on GitHub. So pwede nyo paglaraan to. Hindi po kami magpintuan. Are they all that should run in a virtual machine? This is actually running on the actual server of uh, DigitalOcean. So like that. So like this is the actual setup of Kubernetes. <coughs> so ito na yung, uh, ito na yung WordPress MySQL. That's actually the produced uh, part of that 
uh, my of that uh, configuration file, and it's now running. It's been running for 18 hours. Um, and then the last one. This is the WordPress deployment. This is where uh, you will uh, set up your your WordPress, and you will connect that to your database. So check that the WordPress deployment. So Marisha load balancer. Uh, it will be using persistent volume. And then WordPress as front end. And we will be using the WordPress image. Okay. So saan galing to? Ang tanong is, saan galing itong image na to? Since Kubernetes is using Docker, this is actually coming from the Docker Hub. Or, kung specify mo in the Docker, you know, proprietary Docker repository. Docker. There, WordPress. <coughs> so this is the official WordPress image. So kung gusto mo ng 4.8.2, WordPress 4.8.2, using Apache PHP, uh, using PHP 7, This is this is it. 4.8.2 dash Apache. That is the tag that we are using. So when it installs, it installs your WordPress 4.8.2 using Apache. Okay. So when you sign up, uh, sabay sabay, kung mga uh, sa server, so di ba the server na yung sa Docker so. Install uh, install, ang ginagawa mo is uh, install ka ng Apache, Apache, and then MySQL, and then if you want to, if you want to have a very nice looking dashboard for uh, MySQL, so mag-install ka din ng HPI. Yes, i-include mo na dun sa, sa images mo. Ah. Yung image na ito kasi, this image is only WordPress and Apache, mm -hmm. and then so connect siya dun sa MySQL database. Mm -hmm. Yung kanina pinatakbo natin using a persistent volume. Mm -hmm. Pero if uh, napansin ko say for for enterprise, may kanya-kanya silang uh, images for Apache, for MySQL, mm -hmm. for Nginx, mm -hmm. tapos yung combine nila yun. Um, but since we're just uh, doing this for the sake of uh, uh, development, so ito lang yung dalawa lang, uh, using this WordPress and using the official database, my, my SQL image. So ayaw ko nang gamitin, ano? Uh, example, ayaw ko nang, ayaw ko gamitin, ayaw ko mag-insta ng MySQL. Gusto MariaDB. MariaDB. Okay, punta ka naman sa MariaDB. Hi. But make sure na the same yung, yung, uh, kung ano nila, yung uh, configuration. Ah, uh, configuration. Oh, kasi may, there are actually the uh, MariaDB images na andun na yung naka-specify na rin tong what yung about, password. What about Amazon RDS? Amazon RDS? Pwede rin. You can actually uh, call them. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and ito na yun. So, WordPress MySQL. So, itong dalawang to. Itong kares mamaya natin dito topic yan kung bakit nagkaroon ng ganyan. Okay. Okay. So, This is actually the information kung saan mo siya pwedeng uh, i-access. Look, uh, WordPress 10.108.170, that's 21 pending. That means that you cannot access that, but 
because that's a private. So, ang gagawin natin is, uh, pwede natin i-access uh, our WordPress using uh, our Node IP and this port 31649. So, kunin natin yung IP from our digital ocean. Okay, copy. Three one six four nine. So this is our WordPress. And then kunin natin yung isa. Uh, copy. Three one six four nine. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> the problem is, paano kung gusto mo siyang iset up with your own domain? Di ba? Mm -hmm. Alam mm -hmm. naman, mm -hmm. papaisyo mo yung may port na oh. 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 <laughs> Dito okay. naman, papasok si load the, uh, oh. digital ocean load balancer. <clears throat> Para pwede mong iset up yung domain mo. Okay. So, set up na load balancer. Ano pala mga load pa ako? Straight load balancer. Load ka dyan. $20 per month, okay? So, lagyan natin my LB. Okay. Search for a droplet. Di ba, meron na tayo. Node 1 and Node 2. So, lagyan natin yung Node 1. Thank you. Note 2. Okay, yung dalawang droplets na yan will serve as dito niya kukunin. Si load balancer will look into this uh, nodes. Okay? Now, this is the forwarding rules. So, yung droplet natin is only showing the 6149 port. Diba? 6149. 3 Three one six four nine. Same as with our so pending round robin or list connections. So usually round robin yung mga. Dito is palitan din natin to. This is the health check. So si si uh, Digital Ocean will check this port whether if it's running or down. Dapat si 31649. 3, 3, oh, yan para. 31649. And then you can configure yung settings. Great code balancer. Ano mo, sequence lang? Yan, yung iba. It takes uh, a longer time to set up your load mm -hmm. balancer. Kasi may, may ano pa, may security group pa, kailangan sa load balancer. Sa, <laughs> sa isa, kaya may nakumpisa sa A. Yes, sila. <laughs> kaya set up lang naman matagal. Ah, ano? Convenient for convenient. Digital po siya. Ayan yung bago pa rin. Well, any uh, comments or observations? So, di ba yung dalawa yung container na pinasok? Mm -hmm. So, magkaipas uh, lang port na pwede, pwede siyang i-assign natin doon sa, di ba? Isang load na lang sa dalawang container sa loob. Mm -hmm. And then, kung gusto mo i-access yung isang container, ay yung container 2, and then, container 2 lang i-access kung mayroon mo siyang specific mm -hmm. port. Port. Pwede mong i-specify yung port, yes. Ayun. Let's get to work. Now, our IP is this. IP of the load balancer. So, copy natin siya. And make sure, uh, dapat nag-work na dyan nyo. Yung website. So, yun na yung website. Actually, IP pala. Ah. <coughs> ha, so, for, for you, for? It's 31649. 3, 1. Check na. Ayun na. Error. Error. Three. Copy na. Forwarding 
7.1 and uh, uh, it, it just takes uh, less than 10 minutes to roll, roll it out the, the changes because if you're going to manually upgrade the PHP version that will take the server uh, one hour and then if you have like five servers you have five hours but with Kubernetes Yes. And ang kagandahan dito is when you upgrade, your site is still up. Walang downtime. Is this something to do with the website speed also? Yes. No. Shopping ka lang. Just a little bit. Yung website ka lang. Yeah, so still alive, and that's all for now. I wish we had a lot of time. Okay. So, any questions? Wala. Okay. So, in behalf. Kaya niyo magkakitutoy. Yep. Kaya ko magkitutoy to Kubernetes. Git deploy. Yeah. Yes. Kaya. So, like, nasa configuration. Yes, it's a configuration. It's a manifest mode. Uh, either you will be using uh, an image or you can directly connect to your uh, GitHub or, or GitLab. So, it's Or if you have a private repository of your GitHub or, bit, or private repository of your Docker, it's also <clears throat> All right, so thank you guys.